<laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to the last part of this mini matches series. Now before we go any further, I just want to remind you that below we have some subtitles in English and Japanese for you if you need them. Today we're going to be diving into more depth about the production of matcha itself. Now we're going to look at the grinding part and how the leaf is processed during that time. But if you haven't already seen the videos on the processes before that, then I implore you to go and have a look at Moe and Mali's videos as well. Would you guys be able to introduce your videos a little bit? Okay. Hello everyone, I'm Moe and I made the first episode in this series uh, where we take a look at tension production which is the processing straight after the harvest. Hello everyone, I'm Mary and the video I made is about the process after the tensha factory in Moe's video and before the final processing in George's video. Again, if you want to see the whole matcha process, it's very important to be able to understand how each of the different processes work to be able to produce this delicious final product. So if you haven't seen them already, I really recommend you jump back into the previous episodes and watch those before this one as well. So let's learn a little bit more about matcha grinding and matcha brewing. Right, before we dive in, this video is split into three parts. Firstly, the grinding factory, how the tenture is ground to produce our delicious matcha. Secondly, a brewing guide so you know how to brew a delicious bowl of matcha as well. And lastly, a cultivar comparison between three very different cultivars we use to produce our matcha. So if you want to skip ahead or skip between, there are timestamps below and you can find what you're looking for. Follow me. This way. <laughs> so, welcome to the Magic Grinding Factory. And today we are visiting our friends over at uh, Nishkot and they are grinding some of Boo Matcha. So, let's go and have a look. So, all of this, all of this is a Boo Boo Matcha being ground. And look how beautiful the green is. So if you want to come and have a look, so we have different parts of this grinding mechanism. At the top we have the hopper where we can put the tensure and this is slowly fed down into the grindstone where it's very finely ground into the matcha we know and love. It's around 6 microns in diameter each particle, which is minuscule. So you're able to get a very smooth feeling when you're drinking the matcha later. So this is a Boo Boo's Matcha and we're really excited to have this in stock at the shop as well. So, after the matcha has been ground, it falls out either side of the grindstone and it's collected in this tray. This tray is collecting all of the powder that is being made, the tea powder, that matcha, the delicious matcha. We are now opening up uh, the grindstone so we can see inside. This is also how they clean it as well. These granite grindstones are laser cut in pairs. It is essential for the quality of the matcha that they are kept in pairs so that the contact surface is a perfect match. The stones are recarved every 10 years or so by an expert craftsman is trained over many many years. It takes over 30 hours to grind the one kilo of matcha that's in each one of the hoppers. With each of these stones only producing 30 grams of matcha per hour. This factory runs 24 hours a day, 365 days per year with expert technicians making sure that the matcha is being ground perfectly. A boo boo ceremonial matcha is always stone ground in this factory, making sure that we can keep the best quality each and every year. So we're now in the sifting room and after we've done the grinding we come through into this room to sift it to make sure we get all the finest pieces only and no bigger pieces that have been left from the grinding. There are two machines in here which are sifting the tea 
and we, I'll show you some shots of those in a second. But I've never seen so much matcha in my entire life. It is amazing. But please have a little look. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to actually brew the matcha itself. The first step and what we're going to need to do is to have some hot water. We want to be able to have some hot water so we can warm the teaware. So we're going to be warming the chasen and the matcha one before we brew the tea. This is also going to help us to cool down the water a little bit as well because we want to start the brewing with some cooler water. Now we have our hot water and we want to pour it into our matcha one. We want to heat our chasen. If we don't heat it, it can stay brittle and could break into your matcha. So it's important to heat it with hot water to soften the tines. We then want to dry our matcha one before we put any tea in there. Now we want to take a pick of one of our three teas. So I'm going to brew some Okamidori. This is one of my favorite cultivars. It's very creamy, very sweet. Now the water I used to heat the chasen and the chawa, I can now use to start by making a paste. I just pour a small amount, about 10 milliliters, before I put my thumb on the back, two fingers on the front, and start whisking together. This is going to make a paste, which is gonna make very smooth matcha. I'm gently moving the whisk in the bowl. I don't want to break the whisk and I want to make sure that I get a nice smooth matcha because if I don't then the lumps are going to catch in my throat and they're going to be quite bitter. No one likes to drink super bitter matcha. So I've made my paste and the tea is ready to be brewed. So I want to take the hot water and pour in about 80 milliliters before I take my chasen again and just do the same circular motion to bring it all together to the same consistency. Now it is ready to whisk and I want to use that M and W motion to be able to create the most bubbles which will create a creamy texture to the tea.
and I finished whisking the bowl of matcha. It looks super delicious. So please enjoy at home. That is so good. If you guys don't have a whisk at home, you need to get a bamboo whisk. Get a chasen and get one from a place where you know that they're not mass produced but they're handcrafted because this is delicious. Okumidori is not a usual cultivar for matcha production but Akisan makes what I would say is the best matcha in Japan. I might be biased, I've tasted quite a few and safe to say this is so good. Mm. Delicious. Having these pre-portion packs is really helpful because there's two grams in here and this is all you need to make a super delicious matcha. Being able to take this around anywhere with you is really handy. You can also gift it to friends, which is a really, really lovely, very special gift coming straight from the tea farms. So, super delicious. This is the first time we have ever put matcha into our tea club shipments. So, I hope you thoroughly enjoy. Okay, now let's compare the three matches which were shipped in the Tea Club box this December. On the left, we have Samidori, which is from one of the farmers we work with in Wazuka, Techa. The area of Wazuka this tea is from is called Hariyama and overlooks the valley of Wazuka. matcha in the middle, Okumidori, and the matcha on the right, Goko, are from our lead farmer and ever-dancing crazy president, Aki. Samidori cultivar is just over 80 years old and often used for gyokuro and matcha and has a very bright green colour to the leaf and imports some of this colour to the tea bowl as well. Okumidori is originally from Shizuoka and created with center in mind. However, this cultivar makes for amazing matcha and is my favourite in this lineup. The Okumidori matcha Aki makes is just superb. Koko was first cultivated in Uji around 70 years ago. It is perfectly suited to the climate in Wazuka and performs best in this area. This cultivar has a characteristic, irresistible, umami rich aroma and flavour. Samadori is fresh, zesty and strong, paired well with sweets and typical for ceremonial use as usucha, paired with the traditional wagashi. 
it is great to feel the experience of a Japanese tea ceremony at home and that's what you can find with this Samatori Matcha. Koko's leaves are ready for harvest three days later than industry standard cultivar Yabukita and makes for a good tea to add to the cultivar collection to make into Tencha for Matcha or Gyokuro. For a luxury experience this matcha is one of the richest textural experiences with great depth and flavour that you will have the chance to taste. Okumidori is an outlier, normally a cultivar reserved for Sencha. However at Abubu, before we had cultivars which are traditionally used for matcha, we tried out producing matcha with Okumidori, and this soon became a favourite among the staff and all of our guests. No one is ever disappointed in a bowl of Okumidori matcha. It's creamy, sweet, with a hint of coconut in the aroma, leaving anyone who drinks it just wanting more. As I've mentioned already, Okumidori is my favourite, and I haven't found any matcha yet which can compare with the experience of this tea. I can safely say that I'm caffeinated for the next week. I really hope our tea club members have enjoyed this shipment and it's a little bit special as this is the first time we've included matcha in the tea club shipment. So I hope you are able to thoroughly enjoy. If you haven't yet seen the previous two episodes in this mini matcha series, it takes you on a journey from leaf all the way through to matcha bowl. If you'd like to be able to see the harvest and the sorting of this leaf before this video, then I've put the links in the description below for you. Please have a lovely rest of your day and enjoy some delicious Japanese tea.